Oh boy, do I get a lot of questions about this topic every day. Every day I get a lot of questions, more and more come. So what I plan to do is I plan to actually show you a screenshot. As you see, this here is a typical layout for an iDatalink digital bypass module and a remote start, doesn't matter which one it is, this is going to apply to just about any system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you one by one, piece by piece, what all these wires, all these connections mean. I'm going to take all the mystery out of all this stuff. And when I get done showing you all this stuff, you're going to realize just how much it's not a big deal. So this is a job that anybody who's above average handy can handle by themselves. And I'm using an iDatalink bypass not on accident. I'm doing it because iDatalink, um, Fortin, and you know those two really, they give you actual real tech support. Their instructions are very straightforward. They're, they're good. Um, now to, to me personally, um, I don't really need all this crap because I understand what it's all about. But to the average person doing this, or someone who doesn't do this very often, who wants to do the job the best that they can, um, I'd like to see you benefit from all the information that I can share with you about doing the job. So I'm going to try to help you take demystify it and take a lot of the pain out of it so that way you can actually go into this job and enjoy the outcome when you know how well you can do it easily if you just know how to do it. Because knowledge is really half the, half the battle. So what, I'm, what I've done is I've taken a PDF file. This is an installation guide for an ADS AL um, for a GM. Okay, so it's not a big deal. This is a car that most people have. Now, these modules, as you may or may not know, you need to have either a loader or you need to have someone like us, a company who sells iDatalink and puts the firmware on there and pre-flashes it with this uh, specific firmware on it for your vehicle. So let's just say, for instance, that you own a Cadillac CTS, okay, a 2011, all right? So you would, you would buy this particular bypass if you're not doing the, the programming yourself. You would give someone like us five bucks or if you're a good customer, you would do it for free. All right? We will put the, the software on the, the uh, bypass with it. And then typically what we do anyway is we email you a copy of this PDF so that way you have it and you can print it, go out to your vehicle and do the job. Okay. Um, if not, you can always get it on iDataLink's site. They have a ton of information and that's, again, why I'm using this particular brand. Um, I like my data link and I like Fortin, but let's get back to um, the job at hand. So we have a Cadillac CDS, a 2011. Now on the first page, well, first page is just mumbo jumbo. Page two is where it starts to get interesting. Okay, you're gonna look. It's gonna say install type. It's gonna tell you it's a data and mobilizer bypass, which means it's gonna do your pass key three. It's gonna do your factory alarm. It's gonna do your door locks, unlocks. Priority unlock if you chose to do it. Trunk pop, heated seats, puddle light circuitry, tack input, door status output, hood, trunk, brake pedal, shut down, e-brake output, and your RAP, which is retained, audit, retained accessory power shut down control. Okay, so it's telling you that you need to do install type number one. So what you do, go on down. And there we go, type one, there's your wiring diagram. Okay, so say if, if you have a, uh, a prestige alarm, okay, um, I'll say prestige because uh, Flash Logic is the same thing as iDatalink, and actually so is OmegaLink. They all use iDatalink. So you can see, again, why I'm using iDatalink because it covers so many of the applications out there. Okay, so we're going to say we're going to use a Prestige, an APS 997C, for instance, okay? And we're going to wire this up via data bus, meaning that the four-pin plug from your remote starter and alarm, you're going to plug that directly into your iDatalink bypass. What this is going to accomplish is it's going to tell the alarm is going to talk to the bypass and vice versa, okay? Kind of like how an HDMI cable does to a television set. This is the preferred method of doing this job, okay? You can of course take a remote start that's not compatible with an iData link for instance and you could hardwire you know the um, the power the ground and the activation turn on to make them work it's, it's not a big deal I do I've done it a million times but these days there's really no necessity to have to go that route because it's the wheels are so well greased with all these brands these days so 
That's your first thing. Data mode, that's what that is. That's your four pin connector. Now, the beauty of using these type of bypasses is that, that they're all digital. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a lot of heavy wiring going on on this left side. So between your remote start and the bypass, these two are working together, but there's a lack of wires going from out of the bypass into the vehicle. What do you got? Five wires. Okay, now this one here is not a true CAN bus installation, which it, it's a data it's a data application. So you can see there's one data wire going into the, the car's PK3 or passkey 3 uh, harness in the vehicle. And that's how the bypass is communicating into the vehicle. In a lot of other scenarios, you would find two wires, which is called CAN high and CAN low. And that's really the output side talking to the car. So you got one you know, talking on one wire and you got the other one talking on the other wire. Just, just kind of like how a telephone wire works. So think of it that way. So all your remote start information is going in between the bypass and the starter and it's going to be minimal stuff going out from the bypass to the car which is which is good because all these connections you would typically have to make from your remote starter would have to be going here there and everywhere into your vehicle all over the place that's time consuming and that's a pain in the ass and that's not fun so let's just start at the beginning that's going to make this a little bit bigger Okay, so on your remote start, you got accessory output. That's going to here, which is going to that wire on the bypass, which is accessory. So accessory to accessory, straightforward. If you scroll down, oh, I scrolled a little, little too far. That's going to the accessory wire, which they show you even the pin configuration in the vehicle, what the plug looks like and exactly where it's located. You can't get better than that. Next wire. It's saying your TAC, the TAC input from your remote starters going into the TAC on the bypass, straightforward again. And this is on the back of this module, it actually tells you all these words that I'm saying to you. You can't see them on the front, but trust me, it's there. Hood status, same thing. It says hood status output green. So put that to whatever the color is on here for the hood. Tailgate window release negative output, same thing. Put it to there. Trunk to trunk, unlock and lock to lock and unlock. Let me just follow that down. Yep, lock and unlock right there. Here's your power and your ground. There's your power and your ground. Ground when running output. GWR, that's what that stands for in case you didn't understand. GWR is ground when running. So when the remote starter is on, it's sending a ground pulse on this wire only when the remote starter is engaged. Ground when running. And that is what goes right there. Okay? And you can see, now all your alarm and remote start functions are already connected. Now on the other side, again, these, these harnesses are an extension of these, at least on this module. On some of them, they're all on one side. This one, they have to break it up for whatever reason. But again, it's the same crap. You got power and ground, which you could just tap off on the other side. Your brake status input, which is going to go to the brake input on the bypass. Trunk, same thing to the trunk. Door status input, follow it along. There you go, door status input. And your ignition output. Ignition output is going to go in common with this pink ignition input here. And there again, there's your plug, there's your vehicle, pin number one. Put it there, and that's it. And then just because I didn't touch on it, I want to show you. PK3, this wire here, they're telling you to run these two wires to here, interrupt it, and have one to the car side and one to the plug side. That's going to interrupt it and, and show it the key value, so that way when a remote starts, it's going to think there's a key present. Ground is telling you to get it a plug, but of course you can get that at a chassis ground. But always follow the, what the manufacturer tells you to do because there might be a reason for this. So it's very important to always follow it along and not, you know, just kind of do what you feel feels good. Do it the way they show you to do it. And then you got your data. This is telling the vehicle everything it needs to know. And you can see, basically, if you just have your bypass and your remote starter, put them side by side, wire tie them together, and just basically do them wire to wire, just like they show. For whatever the application is in your vehicle, you can't go wrong. Then down in the bottom, when it tells you how to program it, Follow it along exactly how it tells you how to do it. Set it up and program it. These units are so such a joy. You turn a key on, 
It talks to the car's computer through the data connector, tells it everything it needs to know, the LED tells you when it's learned, and then you just go ahead and use it. It's just that simple. But for instance, let's just look at something else. Oh, and by the way, when I was saying we're working on a Cadillac CTS, the 2011, it even tells you your ignition connector, the color, the polarity, where it's located, down the line, right there. There's your ground, there's your accessory, there's your PK3 wire, there's the color, that's the polarity of it. Very straightforward. Now we were doing a type 1 installation, but let's just real quick look at something else. Yeah, for GMs, they're not really so big on the CAN bus. I was hoping for something else, but it's not there. I mean, you can see they're all very, very similar, but all do vary. So if you're doing one of these jobs and you're, you're doing the installation, really, you don't have to, you know, drive your installer insane. You don't have to be calling the salesperson because all the information that you really need is available to you. It's right online. You know, we we ourselves we try to help people. You know, with time time forgiving, of course, um, explain to them how these things work. But that's really all there is to it. There's no big mystery to these bypass kits. A good a good place to go, say for that one that we were just working on, for instance, would be idatalink.com. How you do that? Just go onto their site, type in what you have. Say if we have a uh, Chrysler 2012 Town & Country. Oops, what happened? It's going to show you all your choices. This one here, the ALCA will do everything. The blade AL will do the same thing as this one, just in a different format. It's a blade instead of a standard bypass. Then you got the Solo series, which will just do limited functions. And all these bullets explain to you what they'll do. If you want one that does, you know, locks and start, just make sure all those are indicated for what you need them to be. And there you go. Another good one is is right here. It's called ifar.ca. CA for Canada is a Canadian company. And this is another one of my favorites. It's, it's a company called Fortin. They make awesome stuff. Fortin works directly with CompuStar and UltraStart, direct plug-in, unlike the iDatalink, which plugs into Excalibur, Crime Guard, um, AudioVox, Prestige, you know, stuff like that. Same kind of deal. Go on to Vehicles, search for what you're looking for. Say we'll do like a Dodge Ram. Well, that one didn't even really come out yet, so let's just go for this. There's, there's what you need. Evo can. If you wanted to do one with a T-harness, they have an application for that as well. And it tells you what it'll do. Your ignition, your key, your locks, tack, brake, retain accessory power, all this stuff just like I explained in that diagram. And that's all there is to it. It's just that easy.